Hello YouTube. I have a essay I would like to read in the form of a letter when from one of my favorite writers, Hunter S. Thompson. When he was 22 years old, he wrote this to his friend Hugh Logan in response to a request for life advice. Okay. Dear Hume, you ask advice. Uh, what a very human and very dangerous thing to do. For to give advice to a man who asks what to do with his own with his life implies something very close to egomania. To presume to point a man to the right and ultimate goal, to point with a trembling finger in the right direction, is something only a fool would take up upon himself. I am not a fool, but I respect your sincerity in asking my advice. I ask you, though, in listening to what I say, to remember that all advice can only be a product of the man who gives it. What is true to one may be a disaster to another. I do not see life through your eyes, nor you through mine. If I were to attempt to give you specific advice, it would be too much like the blind leading the blind. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against the sea of troubles. Shakespeare. And indeed that is the question, whether to float with the tide or to swim for a goal. It is a choice we must all make consciously or unconsciously at one time in our lives. So few people understand this. Think of any decision you've ever made which had a bearing on your future. I may be wrong, but I don't see how it could have been anything but a choice, however indirect, between the two things I mentioned the floating or the swimming. But why not float if you have no goal? That is another question. It is unquestionably better to enjoy the floating than to swim in uncertainty. So how does a man find a goal, not a castle in the stars, but a real and tangible thing? How can a man be sure he's not after the big rock candy mountain, the enticing sugar candy goal that has little taste and no substance? The answer, and in a sense the tragedy of life, is that we seek to understand the goal and not the man. We set up a goal which demands us of us certain things, and we do these things. We adjust to the demands of a concept which cannot be valid. When you were, we were, when you were young, let us say that you wanted to be a fireman, I feel reasonably safe in saying that you no longer want to be a fireman. Why? Because your perspective has changed. It's not the fireman who has changed, but you. Every man is the sum total of his reactions to experience. As your experiences differ and multiply, you become a better, you become a different man, and hence your perspective changes. This goes on and on. Every reaction is a learning process. Every significant experience alters your perspective. So it would seem foolish, would it not, to adjust our lives to the demands of a goal we see from a different angle every day? How could we ever cope to accomplish anything then other than galloping neurosis? The answer then must not deal with goals at all, or not with tan tangible goals anyway. It would, be, it would take reams of paper to develop the subject to fulfillment. God only knows how many books have been written on the meaning of man and that sort of thing. And God only knows how many people have pondered the subject. I use the term God only knows purely as an expression. There is very little sense in my trying to give it up to you in the proverbial nutshell, because I'm the first to admit my absolute lack of qualifications for reducing the meaning of life to one or two paragraphs. I'm going to steer clear of the word existentialism, but you might keep it in mind as a, as a key of sorts. You might also try something called Being a Nothingness by Jean-Paul Sartre, and another little thing called Existentialism from Dostoevsky to Sartre. These are merely suggestions. If you're genuinely satisfied with what you are and what you're doing, then give those books a wide berth. Let sleeping dogs lie. But back to the answer, as I said, to put the, our faith in tangible goals would seem to be, at best, unwise. So we do not strive to be firemen, we do not strive to be bankers, nor policemen, nor doctors. We strive to become ourselves. But don't misunderstand me. I don't mean that we can't be firemen, bankers, or doctors, but that we, might, but that we must make the goal conform to the individual, rather than the individual conform to the goal. 
in every man heredity and environment have combined to produce a produce a, cert, a creature of certain abilities and desires, including a deep ingrained need to be to function in a, such a way that his life will be meaningful. A man has to be something. He has to matter. Okay. As I see it then, the formula runs something like this. A man must choose a path which will let his abilities function at maximum efficiency towards the gratification of his desires. In doing this, he is fulfilling a need, giving himself an identity by functioning in a set pattern towards a set goal. He avoids, his frustrating, he avoids frustrating his potential, choosing a path which puts no limit on his self-development, and he avoids the terror of seeing his goal wilt or lose its charm as he draws closer to it. Rather than bending himself to meet the demands of what, uh, that which he seeks, he has bent his goal to conform to his own abilities and desires. In short, he has not dedicated his life to reach a predefined goal, but he has rather chosen a way of life he knows he will enjoy. The goal is absolutely secondary. It is the functioning towards the goal which is important. And it seems almost ridiculous to say that a man must function in a pattern of his own choosing. For to let another man define your own goals is to give up one of the most meaningful aspects of life, the definitive act of will, which makes a man an individual. Let us assume that you think you have a choice of eight paths to follow, all predefined got paths, of course, and let us assume that you can't see any real purpose in any of the eight. Then, here is the its essence of all I've said. You must find a ninth path. Naturally, this isn't as easy as it sounds. You've lived a relatively narrow life, a vertical rather than horizontal existence. So it, isn't easy, so it isn't difficult to understand why you seem to feel the way you do. But a man who procrastinates in his choosing will inevitably have his choice made for him by circumstance. So now, so if you now number yourself among the disenchanted, then you have no choice but to accept things as they are, or to seriously seek something else. But beware of looking for goals. Look for a way of life, decide how you want to live, and then see what you can do to make a living within that way of, live, of life. But you say, I don't know where to look. I don't know where to look, what to look for. And there's the crux. Is it worth giving up what I have to look for for something better? I don't know. Is it? Who can make that decision but you? But even by deciding to look, you go a long way towards making the choice. If I don't call this to a halt, I'm going to find myself writing a book. I hope it's not as confusing as it looks at first glance. Keep in mind, of course, that this is my way of looking at things. I happen to think that it's pretty generally applicable, but you may, may not. Each of us has to create our own credo. This merely happens to be mine. If any part of this doesn't seem to make sense, by all means, call it to my attention. I'm not trying to send you out on the road in search of Valhalla, but merely pointing out that it is not necessary to accept the choices handed to you by life as you know it. There is more to it than that. No one has to do something he doesn't want to do for the rest of his life. But then again, if that's what you what you wind up doing, by all means convince yourself that you had to do it. You'll have lots of company. And that's it for now. I'll, until I hear from you again, I remain your friend, Hunter. So yeah, that was a beautiful piece. A man has to choose. Or his choices will be made by circumstances. I'm thinking of translating that into German and doing a German version. Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Bye.